My name is Matt Crump. I've been known as a lot of things over my life. The class clown, the army guy, the rocker guy, the car guy, and the guitar guy. I've also made a lot of mistakes in my life, but the best thing I ever did, let's give my heart and life to Jesus Christ. He led me down a lifelong path and introduced me to my awesome bride, Rockin' Robin. Bless us with two incredible kids and has given me a hope through some of the absolute toughest times of my life. See, I'm battling stage four cancer, and although that sucks, <laughs> it's opened my eyes and heart to a hope I never knew this way before and moments I never noticed. I call those God's Got This Moments, and they reveal hope like never before. Today, I'd like to welcome you to Hope Revealed. Hey everybody, super excited that you're about to hear Caroline Tao, a friend of mine who has an incredible blog and Instagram about beauty. Yes, I know, because look at this. You're about to find out the best part. Hey guys, so my name is Caroline. I am a mother of three, so two toddlers, one infant. And I am married to a very loving husband, so I pretty much lucked out on that. <laughs> um, I do beauty um, related stuff. Um, I love makeup. I love talking and having conversation and getting to know people through that. I also have a beauty blog um, on Instagram mostly is where I post many reviews about products. And the um, page, if you want to meet me on there, is C Tao. That's C as in cat, T H A O dot beauty. And that is uh, where you'll find me and my love of beauty. <laughs> awesome. And uh, beautiful you are. And I am so glad that we're friends. We know each other. I know your husband and, and your children. And you've recently had a child, right? Not too long ago. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> and you have three, three kids, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are their names? So I, my oldest is Kai. That's my son. And then I have a daughter, Aria. She's two. And then the infant child, she is, her name is Iris. And she is, she's putting us in for a loop. She's getting a, us a run for our money. <laughs> <laughs> she's the, she's the one we're gonna have lots of stories about down the road. <laughs> yes. and that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for being with us today here on Hope Revealed. And one of the main things we love to do here is to have a way to share hope with people. And I just was really interested and blown away by the way you, you talk about and handle beauty. Uh, you have some incredible photographs. You, you love to do uh, photography. And yes. you're, you're a self, you do like, you're a great selfie photographer, right? So you do some great <laughs> selfie shots. Like she's got the whole like the big lip thing. I would be horrible <laughs> for a lip model. I'm telling you, this is bad stuff. But I see some of her shots. I'm like, I can't comment on that one today. It's just too beautiful. I can't say anything. I would be in trouble. And I don't want her husband to beat me up. So, <laughs> but it's, it's absolutely incredible stuff, beautiful stuff. Obviously, I'm not a big makeup guy, but, um, you know, you do so many things that are so um, detail oriented and focused to help people to know how you do what you do, how you make the lips just perfect and your shadow and your eye stuff and the <laughs> eyeliner thing of a Bobby's and whatnot. So good, right? So I, I wanted to dig into that a little bit today to share with folks how, how you have a heart for people um, to not only just use makeup, but that's, there's more to it than just makeup, right? But before we get into some of that, I just, I know that your, your life is so amazing because um, I get to know you personally and, and your background is very impressive, very exciting for people to know. You're a first generation here in the United States of America. Um, is your husband as well? I forgot to ask that earlier. Is he as well? First gen? Or? No, actually he was born in Thailand. He's so born in he's Thailand. Not, yeah, he was born in Thailand. That's amazing. <laughs> well, if you can share with us a little bit about your background and where you come from and, and how you're here in the States. Yeah. So um, I was just explaining to Matt earlier that my parents basically came from um, from Thailand. They were refugees from the, I don't know if you guys know the guerrilla war, but they were, um, they basically swam over the Mekong River, sat in a refugee camp, and then came here through um, the help with the um, United States and then um, got their citizenship. So I was born here. Um, I know a little bit about the country, but honestly, I've never gone to visit, but it has 
it does have like a big role in why I love beauty because growing up in my home, um, sorry, I think there's a, a little wool there, but um, growing up in my home, my, my parents were strict. Um, my mom was like, don't cut your hair. Look at it now. Um, <laughs> don't do your makeup. Look at me now. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, it was really, I wanted to break the barrier. I don't know why. It's just like a calling inside of me. I felt like I was kind of put in this box growing up, you know, um, learning to serve a certain way, to host, um, to men, to women, um, learning to be like a role model or kind of growing up in an in a environment where I was learning to take care of myself. Because that's how my parents grew up, you know, like it wasn't a westernized um, place where they can just kind of go and turn the faucet on and get water. They had to go like get buckets of water back into their home. And so like the the stuff that they did, they really instilled in me like you got to work hard for what you want, you know. And, you know, like while they taught me differently, that lesson does kind of stick. You know, it is a part of me. It's it's who um, it's what's driven me to kind of do what I do, even though in their eyes, I was just being a little rebel girl. <laughs> <laughs> you are a little rebel girl, aren't you? <laughs> that's amazing. And just such an exciting background. And that's one of the questions I'd had earlier was like, you know, with that cultural background and uh, you don't see a lot of makeup traditionally, uh, I guess you could say there are some, there's a lot of westernized communities uh, in, in the Asian province, you know, but what are what are some of the things that your family really felt strongly about? Was, was there like some conflict at home because of you wanting to cut your hair or do makeup? Oh my gosh, conflict for days, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I first dyed my hair, my dad shot me this like side eye look like, what did you do? I mean, it was pretty scary. I was scared to go home after I got my hair done. Oh my goodness. How, how long ago was that? Was that when you were a teenager? Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, I was pretty young. Um, I would say like late teens, early 20s, right after high school. That's when oh I just goodness. decided I was going to break walls down. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're graduated. Now you're an adult. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. And then um, my hair was long for a really long time. I liked it that way. Um, not as long as it was when I was a kid. But then, I don't know, something inside of me just said, cut your hair. So I did. And then my mom was like, what did you do? Um, and so I told her that it was just hair. It would grow back. Um, I never told her that I would keep it short. <laughs> so <laughs> now they're just kind of like, that's Caroline. She just does her hair, like dyes it all sorts of colors and cuts it all sorts of way. Like, yeah. Now so now are they, cool. are they comfortable with that now? And they, do they, how do they feel about that with you now? They still have this <laughs> wish, like they wish you would go back to the way they wanted or. Kind of, sort of, like, I think my dad's now kind of gotten to the point where, like, if it's a color that he's just super shocked by, he'll just kind of stare at it and, like, maybe give me some weird looks and, yeah, <laughs> and be like, <laughs> why did you do that to your hair? Like, I get the same question over and over again, but, I mean, and my answer remains the same, you know. Um, there's this stigma in our culture where if you dye your hair any other color than its natural color or you cut your hair, then you, you become like this bad person. Right. Mm. So I wanted to stand against that and be like, you can dye your hair and cut your hair and still be an awesome person. Yeah. So that's why I was doing this. And so I still answered my dad the same way when he asked me like, well, I'm still a good person. It doesn't matter if my hair is like cut short, it's long, it's black, or I've had a purple one time. I mean like, you know, so purple, that would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like this like violet purple kind of color. Wow, I'm surprised your dad survived that one. <laughs> well, he looked at it, he goes, what? <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So that kind of leads into this question I would have for you then. Um, how do you think, I mean, well, let's, let's, we'll go there in a second. First of all, I'd like you to talk to me a little bit about your passion with, with beauty and makeup and what got you started doing Instagram with, with all this makeup. I mean, you've gone from somebody who couldn't do this to the rebel cutting your hair and doing makeup. To now <laughs> you're this incredible gal on Instagram with a following of people that are, that are learning how to do makeup on their face with certain styles and colors and I guess brands and things like that. You know, what, what's, yeah. what's that all about? So, um, well, where do I start? So, um, the very reason why I got into makeup in the first place, I will be honest and say I had a lot of insecurities growing up, but that's because, um, like I said, my parents put me in a box and that's what I knew. But then translating that into going to school um, with kids having more, I mean, um, 
my parents, we didn't have a lot growing up. So that also, I think, put a stigma in maybe in my mind where I felt like I had to continuously feel like I needed something, I wanted something. And so then it, it kind of brewed into me being insecure about the way that I look. Um, I felt like, oh, I don't like the way my eyes look. You know, they're not deep set. Or I don't like the way my eyebrows are because they're not, like, full. Um, hated the way my face looked because it, it's not super dimensional, you know. And so I was doing makeup because I was adding all of that stuff on there, trying to make it um, seem like I have the features that I desire for. So that's why I started in makeup. I'm self-taught. I went when YouTube first began. Um doing makeup tutorials. I don't remember how long ago that was, but I still follow some original um, YouTubers that do makeup on there, just so you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm yeah, still following like, follow them, too, as you can see. This morning I have a rose uh, <laughs> blush <great>. on here. <laughs> yeah, my eyeliner is pretty good. You can't even see it. <laughs> oh, so natural. So, yeah, so that's how I learned to do makeup. I'm basically self-taught, learned from them, um, and I was doing everything that they were doing. And then I kept wondering, like, why does my makeup look so different? Why is it so beautiful on them? And on me, it looks like, look, like, what does she do? You know? <laughs> I had to learn that their features are not the same features as mine. Um, where they place their eyeshadow colors, I can't do it there because I have hooded and monolids. So that's a double whammy for me, you know? And so, um, and so through that, through learning how to do makeup, through gaining confidence in my skills, not necessarily the makeup itself, which is, learning how to apply makeup, learning and understanding the products and the tools. I think that's really helped what helped me like get, get the confidence to do my makeup in a way where it does accent my hooded and mono lids, you know, like applying lipstick in a way where the, like I have, my lips are uneven. One side just is more fl um, like a slanter and like flatter than the other side. Like how do I try to, you know, get that, where it, when you look at it, it looks even, you know? And so, um, I don't know, like just that in itself, like the skills that I acquired through just continually like practicing and trials of like, why does my makeup not look the way she looks? What am I doing wrong? Like asking myself questions so that I can help myself grow from it. Um, really helped me get that confidence and help me build the skills that I have. Like I'm not a professional by any means, but I can definitely, uh, <laughs> I can definitely put some makeup on like my sisters and stuff when they go to prom or have formals and whatnot. Oh no, I'm sure you're pretty qualified to do a whole lot more than that. So <laughs> that's, that's really uh, some incredible thoughts there. So you can do a lot more than just a few pictures of makeup. You really can help people to understand and identify with uh, the fact that you know there's different shapes and and sizes and everything and colors. And because of that, there's different ways to do it. So some folks, you know, some gals out there may wrestle with the fact that they think that they're, they're ugly and, you know, they can't change anything and they're just never going to be as pretty as, as you, you know, um, so they get upset or quit. Now, I, I, you, can you address that with what you do in your blogs at all? Do you talk about that? Um, I haven't yet. I think that you're one of the first person, we're not really one of the first, but um, ask it, one of the first few to ask me um, a question like that. Um, when someone feels insecure and they buy makeup, just talking from my own experience and how I grew from that, um, I used to buy makeup because I thought that it would um, help kind of mask my what I thought was ugly. Mm -hmm. Um, and that if, if I didn't see it, then other people wouldn't see it either. And so, um, I think what truly gives you that beautiful, like radiance, like, oh my gosh, what's that one thing that she has that I don't have thing. It's definitely your, you self loving yourself. Like you have to love yourself from the inside out. And I had to learn that, um, in the hard way. Um, how did you do that? What, what was the hard way? So, um, I, I was really selfish in my thoughts. I had a, um, sorry, I had a, um, a unexpected pregnancy with my son and I did not want to be pregnant. I never thought myself as a mom. Um, I loved like kids, but not for me. I really, Matt, I <laughs> you love other people's kids. I know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, you can hear her kids in the background. She's got a whole team, sisters and husband, everybody taking care of the kids just so she can be on the call today. It's so amazing. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank goodness for them. Yes. But, um, but anyway, I felt like, um, I felt like 
when I was pregnant, I wasn't ready for it. Um, I thought of having a, a beautiful home with a huge closet because I grew up with really no clothes. So like, because that was kind of absence in my, in my home, like in my mind, I thought like that would fill the void oh, that wow. I thought was missing. And so, um, yeah, I got pregnant with our first kid and I was like, what the heck? Like I was so in denial that I was pregnant that even when I heard the heartbeat, I was all like, but did I really hear the heartbeat? You know, like that's- <laughs> <laughs> that might've been last night's burritos. I'm not sure. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how like, I was like, I'm, am I really pregnant? Like still trying to wrap my mind around it. But when I did, I realized, oh my gosh, my body's going to change. Um, my face got fuller because I was putting on more weight or more water weight. Um, my belly is going to get bigger. I loved the way I looked um, figure wise, um, physically before I got pregnant. And, um, and by and the I way, folks, like, I don't mean anything like this. I'm a happily married man. 30 years at this past weekend, actually the weekend passed. But Caroline, she's beautiful. I mean, she's... <laughs> She has got it going on from head to toe, and Kong is a happy, happy man. She's, she's definitely very beautiful. So to hear some of these insights from someone like this, um, to know that she uh, already was, is, um, I consider her just to be a perfect person in appearance and definitely in her heart. But um, to hear some of these behind-the-scenes thoughts about what she's feeling during this moment, I think it's pretty important to really tune into. We've got another question coming up in a minute. So back to you, Caroline. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, But yeah, I mean, long story short, I definitely struggled. My body stretched in ways I didn't think it would. And, um, (laughs) (laughs) and through the whole like process of being pregnant, you know, your belly's growing, your appetite's growing, your emotional, like all of that really just kind of made me feel ugly on the inside. I was so insecure that I felt like my husband wouldn't love me anymore because my body was not the way that it was. Wow. And, and honestly, like, I'm so lucky that I have my husband in my life because I honestly feel like he was my rock. He constantly reminded me, you're beautiful. Um, you're carrying a child. Like that's God's greatest gift. You know, like that's a beautiful thing. You're, you know, there's life inside of you. That's beautiful on its own, you know? And like constantly reminding me of that thing. Cause I was so like drawn into the world view of what beauty is mm-hmm. that I cannot see myself feeling beautiful ever again and what was that what was that beautiful role the world has that you just referred to oh my gosh like um having the perfect body having the perfect hair having you know like the model-esque or the 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 lifestyle that you see in magazines and that was just going to lead me to uh, what i was just going to say i saw this thing on pinterest and it said you know like how can you be physically fit for the world and not physically fit for the king? Ooh. And that's when I was like, what king Whoa. are you talking about? King Charles? King what king? No, king our God. <laughs> God. Oh, I'd love to hear some about that then for sure. Yeah. So I was like, it really caught me off guard because I was self-checking myself. Like, am I so selfish that my thoughts on my body is only for the world, but not for God, the man who created me, the God who created me, because he obviously saw that I was beautiful. So why can't I see that I'm beautiful myself? You know, what is it? Yeah. So that's basically what led me to my journey and learning to love myself from the inside out. And um, yeah, after I had my son, it took a lot of work because not only did the whole pregnancy belly growing thing, like woke me up, but it was the whole healing process after that too, where I was like, hold on now. This was what I asked for. You did know? you have to do? Did you have to do a lot of working out and do things to get back into shape you like, or did did it come natural? How did it work for you? So it was a lot of working out and dieting. Um, I used to be, I was like a um, hundred pounds before I got <gasps> pregnant. Yeah, I gained thirty pounds, and then of course, like that, just kind of lost after I um, after I had Kai. But when some of it, uh, most of it, really needed to be um, worked off in a healthy way. So my husband loves to work out, so he was really good for that. But he also encouraged me to work out because I was, like, looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, I don't like the girl that I see. She's so ugly. She's so fat, like, fat, unwanted. Um, uh, look at my, like, skin type of things. Like, look at my, my stomach area. Like, what is that, you know? Like, those words were really eating at me. So one day my husband was all like, you know, reminding me how beautiful I was as always. And then said, you know, if you don't like the way you look, what are you going to do about it? It's, you know, like you're not incapable. That's not something that 
you know, it's there forever. You can definitely, you know, work on yourself and, and change the way you think about yourself, change the way you look physically. If it's weight, you can lose the weight, you know, you know, it's very encouraging in that aspect. But as I was working on myself, um, working out and stuff, I think there was another change inside of me because I started to love myself more when I realized that, um, with my, one of my best friends, um, she was like, you know, like, you can lose all the weight, but are you still going to be insecure? And the answer was yes. I can lose all the weight, and I was still going to be insecure. Why was that? I was missing something. I didn't know what it was. And then I found God, and that's when I was like, that's what I was missing. Now everything else doesn't even matter. Well, that's amazing. So what does that mean then to, um, from that transition from feeling ugly and fat and all those things you just described to um, – to where you're at now, you're a very confident woman. You're very bold in your your uh, thought processes and, and your your beauty. Very forward with it. You're not hiding it like your dad and mom are gonna be ups- upset. I mean, you're on Instagram for crying out loud, right? Doing everything. So, yeah. you know what what was that uh, what was that confidence that you got? What was that experience with God to help you to to balance that beauty for one, and then the the beauty balance between um, vanity, like things where people just put it on to put it on or or to put it on to um to enhance certain things or to uh not just to do it to please people but you know can you explain that a little bit yeah so um i'm gonna back up here just a little bit um i just wanted to kind of give you some background my parents didn't they're not christians right they so they believe in something else and so i grew up doing that too but then, like, I just kind of always felt like, what else is there out? I mean, like, what else is there, you know, like, out there? Um, and then my, um, one of my really good friends, she kind of was like, well, you know, I wanted, she, she was very happy, right? And I wanted to know, like, how do you, how do you get that? Um, how do you maintain that joy inside of you, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's when um, she kind of, like, led me, or she was one of my first friends, that basically saved me and she didn't even know it because I was a sad little girl. I remember in elementary school riding on the bus and thinking like, no one wants to be my friend because I don't look like them. Wow. And she came and sat next to me and she was all like, have you heard of Jesus? And I was like, no, what are you talking about? Who's Jesus? Right. I'm telling you, like, I thought that this was like a person that I can just go and shake hands with like physically. Right. Amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And she goes, did you know that he's going to um, save us? Like, did you know that he saved us? Like just talking to me. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, what are you doing? You know? And then she explains to me that um, Jesus loves me. And I didn't understand what that meant. Right. As a kid who did not grow up into a Christian family, I was like, okay, my parents love me. So, you know, that's cool. You know, like that's basically how I was thinking very one track minded. And then she gave me this Bible, this children's Bible that had like really like stories, short stories of these um, like Noah and Moses. And she says, I want you to read this because I want, I want you to be saved. You know, like when Jesus comes, he's going to take me to heaven, but I want you to come to heaven with me. Right. So I was like, uh, okay, where's heaven? You know, like, and so (laughs) it's right down the block. That's right. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) And so then she was like, (laughs) she goes, I want, I'm going to, I know that I'm going to heaven because I'm, I'm saved and I want you to come with me too. Cause you're my friend, mind you, I didn't even know her. Right. But all of a sudden I gained a friend. And this was in like elementary school. Yeah, elementary school. We're riding wow. on the bus together. I remember this day like yesterday. Wow. She gives me a book and she says, I want you to read this because I want you to go to heaven with me. And I looked through it. I honestly looked at the pictures. I didn't really read the book. Um, I'm a picture guy too, girl. We're, we're <laughs> in the same group. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> saw some words here and there. I was like, oh, okay. You know, um, but anyway, my, I, my dad went through my book bag and saw that Bible and he was livid. I'm oh, telling man. you. Oh, man pretty much chunked it across the room and said, why do you have that book? Wow. So I was like, oh, my friend. Like, I was scared. So I was like, my friend wants me to hold it for her, you know? And so he was like, well, why does he, does she not have a book bag? So I made up some lie and said, wow. Oh, she didn't have room in her book bag, right? So he goes, return that book. I never want to see anything like that ever again in this house. 
Wow. I didn't, I didn't know why he was so mad. You know, I didn't, I didn't understand him. And so I gave it back to her and she goes, Oh, you can keep it until you're done reading. And I was like, I'm done. I'm done reading. So I gave yeah, it we back. just finished. <laughs> I found out. <laughs> so I gave it back to her. And really from that moment, like there was a seed that was planted because I became very curious. Like, why was my dad so mad at that? Who is Jesus? Who are these people in these like stories you know, of these pictures that I will see? What was their significance? You know, growing up, that little seed just kind of grew. It came out like had little roots. All yeah. of a sudden, I'm on this like journey of of how I found my faith. And um, and this past year, I actually wrote her a thank you letter. Like over the uh, over years, like the years that we we went to school together, and then our life just kind of took us apart. We are for, we went from like being best friends to acquaintances, but. We always like there was no hard feelings or anything like that. Like we, whenever we talk, we still kind of pick up where we left off. But I just felt the need to really thank her, so I wrote her a letter uh, this past uh, November to let her know that her friendship meant so much to me that it actually literally saved me because I found so much joy because of her. And that's and so amazing so, and yeah. such a good point for us to think of. Like, who is somebody in your life that's impacted you in yeah. such a way and? And is there an opportunity, yes, for you to try to reach out to them? Unfortunately, circumstances happen and maybe somebody's still not here. Um, but yeah. putting forth the effort is phenomenal versus going to your grave thinking, I wish I would have, right? Uh, yeah. That's an amazing story. You've had an experience with Christ, evidently, and you're now a Christian. And, yeah. um, and now you're doing this whole beauty thing and you've yes. got your own blog and whatnot. So how do you, how do you balance that with... Um, with being a Christian, right? And, and you have a husband. I mean, how do you, uh, the Bible talks about how to respect and honor one another. And how does he feel about this with you showing everybody your, your face and your big old beauty lips when you come up there? Like, <laughs> oh, look at my eyes. Look at, today I got purple on, whatever, you know, uh, cause yeah. it's, it's really beautiful. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I know some of the answers here, obviously, cause I know, I know you too, but people here watching don't but, but yeah what, what's that like so um I I feel like with my husband he's always been supportive he's like find your passion and run with it because what can go wrong you can only succeed from there like if you really love something that you do you are not going to not want to learn about it you're not going to like stay out of the loop and just kind of like sit in your corner and just wait for everyone They're like, oh i'll wait till everyone catch up like you're really trying to move yourself whatever your passion is you know just go for it um how i balance that you know life of instagramming and like doing makeup and and my in my faith honestly on my um on my instagram you won't find that i really talk about my faith because i feel like it comes like when i talk to someone about my faith it's really i love it i love it when there's a personal connection so if someone's having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, then that's when I really feel like, you know, like the intimacy there. But because it's social media and it reaches such a broad, you know, like um, audience, um, not that I keep faith out of it, but I do feel like it, I don't know, like I can connect more if I'm just being myself and not really like pressing Jesus into someone's life, you know, because I want it to be where someone looks at me and just ask themselves like, why does she have so much joy? How can I get that? You know, right, so right. I don't really want to, that makes any sense to you, but totally. Um, I mean, you're a very authentic person and you know, it's a great value that you have to, you're really just caring for other people when you do that. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm a Christian as well. And I try not to, uh, to, you know, put fish symbols and crosses on everything that I do. Yeah. I would hope that my life speaks for itself and, Exactly. And people will find out who I am or what I am doing rather. Um, so yeah. back to your, to your husband, then, you know, you said he's, he supports you, but how does he feel about the, the blog and uh, does he want you to keep going? Where's this going to go? That's what I'm asking. Like, do you have plans for this to, to do something bigger down the road or it's just a hobby or what is this? So honestly, like the whole Instagram thing, my best friend was like, why don't you have an Instagram? Just basically documenting, your beauty, like basically like a beauty book. And I told my husband about it and he goes, go for it. What are you waiting for? Go for it. You know? And so he's, he's very supportive in that aspect. Um, he helps me with the kids when I need just a couple moments to get those lip shots <laughs> 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 or, or if I'm in the middle of like editing a photo and 
I really just want to get it out. Um, then, you know, he, and he's there. He's like, don't worry about it. I got the kids. He's really good at like feeding them, distracting them, you know, like, um, making them feel like they have attention. Um, that's, I mean, cause that's really all what they want anyway is attention. So sometimes like I'm with them. I'm a stay-at-home mom. So if you guys don't know, I'm a stay-at-home mom. So being with my kids all the time is I, – I, I can get a little crazy, okay? like. <laughs> by the way, your, your husband's in the military, and you guys are – he's getting ready to to, to uh, leave the, the United States here shortly, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, and you'll be is. without him for, for – well, you're not without people. you got family to be staying with, but he'll be gone for about a year, right? Yes, he will for about wow. a year. Wow, and you guys are such a team, right? So, I mean, how – how hard is that going to be without your husband around? I mean, I'm going to miss him jumping in. Like I really am. I'm going to miss him like distracting our kids. He's so good at that. So I'm, so I'm the mean Us parent. husbands, we distract very well. <laughs> I'm the mean parent and he's a fun parent, right? Oh, now. good cop, bad cop. He's the good cop. I got gotcha. you. You're the mean, you're the meanie. Are you the meanie? I'm you know what? Yes, because I'm more stern. My husband is like, oh my uh, goodness! I would never have thought you're just a. I said do this. Oh. I'm the mean one, man. Oh my gosh, it's so sad to say. No. <laughs> but That's my awesome. kids, like when I when I have that mom voice, like they do stop it though. So, so it's kind of like that stare. But everyone knows that mom stare. I I didn't get it when, before I had kids. No, like it just comes naturally. So if you're someone that's, just, you know, if you're a mom, you just know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I've seen it. So it's, it's a wife look too. It's a combo look. It's just, <laughs> it's that look. Yeah. Oh my God. That's amazing. So, so how do you, um, a couple more questions. We'll wrap up here, but how do you, um, honor your husband? Uh, honor is a really big deal in, in, in an Asian culture. And I wish it was more in all cultures all cultures it's not a domineering situation whatsoever but how how do you honor your husband um and respect him with sharing your beauty which i believe as a you know that's for for him first and foremost but uh, he shares you with the world which i think is he's an amazing guy he's so loving and so free to share you with no fear whatsoever i mean you guys have complete trust in one another um, so how do you honor that back to your husband? How do you honor him with what you're doing with your beauty and, and the blog and everything like that? Yeah, well, um, Matt, a couple of things do come into mind. Like the word, um, the word trust comes into mind. And how do we, how do you get trust? You know, I'm very open. Um, as you can already see, I'm very open. I'm very, whenever something happens, I always tell my husband like, Oh, oh this person, uh, you know, like, uh, was talking about this, or I just got, you know, a, uh, a message from a company that wants to do, you know, wants me to be like an ambassador for their products. And I'll kind of share with them what that company is like. And he always asks me, like, is that something you want to do? You know, and I'll be like, yes or no. And I'll give him my reasons why. But I think a big, um, a big thing with that is modesty. Modesty plays a big role. Um, I think that beauty, <clears throat> with my beauty journey, um, my self-confidence journey, um, being alluring isn't always the most beautiful thing. I mm. think that, yeah, so. um, modesty is beautiful. It's dainty. It's very like classy. It's very like welcoming and a friendly, like, um, um, like let's be, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like modesty is something that I take a lot of pride in. Um, because whatever, like the intimacy with myself and uh, my my makeup and stuff like that, I feel like there's a big chunk of it that stays between my husband and I because that really is what holds my our, our marriage together. You know, like that trust, understanding that you know um, I wouldn't go and do this or represent my body in a way where it's alluring to men or you know like um, offensive to other people. You know, like I, this is just who I've always been. Um, I don't always flaunt physically body parts because, um, I, honestly, that's just how I was raised. Um, but then, and I used to think that that was so weird, by the way, that modesty was not pretty, but honestly, I think modesty is pretty darn sexy. Like I'm, I know I'm using that word, but no, I agree. Um, I my when I met my wife, one of my prayer requests uh, to the Lord was I I wanted to meet a woman who was a godly woman, and I wanted her to have a natural beauty. I wanted to meet a woman that didn't require makeup, and um, 
I, I don't have a problem with makeup, but I just, when I met my wife, she mm-hmm. first, our first hello, she opened the door. She didn't have makeup on and um, she didn't have to. She was a knockout right, right at the moment when I saw her. And at that point, makeup was just like uh, the bonus round, icing on the cake. It was like, wow, it got <laughs> even, even better, right? But uh, yeah. just like you, she doesn't cake it on. She doesn't go crazy with it. She just knows how to accent what, what God gave her. And you are an extremely, I, I mentioned this before, it's an extremely natural um, beauty. You have makeup on. Um, a lot more makeup than than people would think, probably, but it's not um, it's not overdone, and I think that modesty has a big part of what you do and why you do it, huh? Yeah, it really is. Um, when when I was talking about covering up my flaws earlier, like because that's why I was wearing makeup. Um, now I do it because honestly, because I love it, and um, yeah, I can cover up like acne scars or whatever. But I know that when I take off my makeup at the end of the day. I do love myself. I do. Um, now that's not to say like some days I'll falter and be like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, like my face, right? Like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, what is that on my face? Right. But, and I do, and it's not something like where I'm constantly like, yeah, I just love myself every single day of my life. No, there are some days where I'm like, what is going on? Like, why am I faltering back to my old self? Like, what do I need to do? What, like, what is missing? How do I keep this like engine going? You know, mm-hmm. like that's, that's the journey of learning to love yourself. You're always going to fall back, but it's the pickup and how you move forward with it is what's the most important piece because it's going to build that character that you have inside mm-hmm. yourself. But um, yeah, I mean, natural beauty is something that I value so much now because I mean, like without my mono lids, without my hood and eyes, I would not know how to put makeup on. What in the world does that mean? You've said that several times. But you said oh, mono, yeah. mono lids or whatever. Yeah. What's that so mean? Like, um, so my my eyelid, like there's like there's like it kind of like when it's hooded. So like my lid right here. I'm gonna get a little bit closer, you guys. It's gonna be a little weird. No, <laughs> so my cool. eyes right here. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys can see I don't have deep set eyes, right? Because my skin just kind of folds over. And if it was deep set, you would see like a crease, it's like a natural crease inside my eyes. So you know, but now like it's, everything's just really kind of flat. And if you have a double lid, then you would see you know, like your, your skin here and then another lid space, but I don't have that. I only have one and then I have the skin that folds over. So is that more uh, common in, in, uh, in an Asian, uh, eye than it um, would be like in my kind of, and of course I'm not makeup, but I mean, I know there is a difference, but is that, is that maybe just, you have a, you were born that way and, and other people have two or you just have one. How's that? Is that right? So, um, I know like with Asian eyes, <laughs> There's so much like variation of hooded eyes or mono lids that um, like how like my sister's eye shape when I do makeup on her is completely different from mine. So I have to kind of, yeah, I have to kind of apply makeup on to her and tweak it how I would do myself. And so like um, um, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of complicated. Like a lot of Asian eyes I think are the most challenging ones because it varies so much. But if you have like a deep set eye where, you know, you have your, um, your, or I guess like orbital bones kind of like protrude a little bit more and you have more like structurally sound face, at least that's what I've always like desired for myself, um, before I started to really just love my face for what it is. Um, then it would be like how you place your makeup. I always imagined it'd be so much easier because Matt, I'm telling you for a long time, I looked like someone stalked me in the eye, like <laughs> applying <laughs> like, you had black um, <laughs> eyes, right? Yeah. You're a punk rocker. You're just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Applying like makeup and stuff. It really like, and people think of me weird too, but I, I, and I always asked myself, like, why doesn't this look right? So it was really just a process of me learning how to love and get to know my face. Um, learning and, and understanding that, you know, I was created this way because it's beautiful because um, the creation of life is beautiful in its own. I'm carrying features of my parents, my grandparents, and, and I'm a representation of them. Mm. I'm a, you know, like, so, and, and they're beautiful souls. So, you know, it's kind of like, why would I hate myself so much that I can't identify with 
you know, like my family or myself anymore because I've locked myself up in a way where I see beautiful girls like on magazines. I used to read like um, Claire magazine and um, Cosmo, I think it was like Cosmo magazine or something like that, really for the makeup and to study the face of girls that I wish like the features of their face. Cause I wish I had it on myself. Wow. Like that's how far down deep I was in. Like, yeah, that's really amazing. I think cool. about that with yeah. different people, different people's passions. A lot of people wouldn't think <laughs> makeup, whatever, but you're like into magazines and checking things out and scoping out faces. Yeah. And this is like no school. You're not in cosmetology class. This is all just your personal interest and to figure this out, which, which yeah. you've done a very good job at. So um, we'll, we'll close up here in a second. So before we do that, what, where can they find the blog again? And um, is that separate from the Instagram? And if it is, what are those two locations that people can find you at? Or do you have a link to your Instagram from the, from the blog? So um, I, ha I have a um, Instagram and that was CTAL beauty. Oh, CTAL dot beauty. How do you spell that? C as in cat T H A O dot beauty. Thank you. And um, yep. And I also have a LinkedIn um, account and it's just Caroline Tao is my name. If you want to search me through there, I do upload some um, pictures on my LinkedIn account. And um, I also have some links to my Instagram so that if you guys are looking at a picture, you'll see that link um, in the description and you can just, it'll link you right over to my, my Instagram account. Do you write articles directly in, in LinkedIn or do you have a separate blog? Um, I write it um, directly in LinkedIn and then also in um, my um, pictures because I do feel like it speaks a thousand words. So why can't I pull it into that picture as well with not just, you know, certain yeah. tips. It's more about life as well. Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah. we're getting ready to go. So if, if you could, well, you are. So right now you're speaking to someone who's looking at you thinking yeah. – you know, I don't understand what she's talking about. I still don't feel good about myself. I'll never be as pretty as her. Um, or I do makeup, but I just can't figure it out. I don't know how to make things right. I mean, all those things, stuff we've talked about with family, your husband. Uh, what would be some things or anything you could say that would bring uh, hope and clarity and direction to someone? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is tough tough question at the end but what would that be thing you go ahead and address that person so to the person that feels um insecure unwanted unloved not beautiful just know that you are beautiful like you are created you were not a mistake um learn to love yourself through your passions and what you do um you are you're unique in your own way. Like there is no one that's ever going to look like you again ever. So, so don't beat yourself up too much for, for whatever flaw you don't like. And, um, and then for the person who is not sure on how to apply makeup, all I can say is practice. I mean, I have gone out in public looking like I didn't know what I was doing on my face and I pretty much <laughs> just rocked it because what else can you do? My daughter's right here. Sorry guys. That's all right. Um, because, <laughs> because what else can you do? You know, um, the only, the only way that you'll ever get better at anything really is just to practice. And even if it's not the way you imagine it in yourself or in your mind, at least you did something towards that vision. And the next time you do it, Find out what worked and what didn't work. Tweak it from there. Just, just keep doing, keep going because eventually you're going to get there and you're just going to start running and take off. Oh, that's so good. So Caroline, can, can people reach out to you and ask questions on LinkedIn or Instagram? Yes, definitely. I welcome conversation. I love talking to people, wanting to know what their passion is, really just connecting because we all struggle. There is no one in this world that I've ever met that's ever said, I have the perfect life. I feel the most beautiful. I like have never struggled in my life. And here I am, you know, like I've never met anyone like that. And learning through people's struggles, learning and seeing that, you know, like I can identify with you, you know, like, yes, um, I, I still have insecurities. Right. So it's like, it's still an ongoing battle. It's never something that when you, when you conquer it, it just never comes back. That's so not true. So I hope that you don't live into that you know, like stigma of, you know, oh, she's, you know, like beautiful and happy. So she must have everything. No, I don't have everything. Like 
<laughs> I'm still trying to work on myself as well. And it's, it's a whole life journey. Like you're never going to stop. You, know? you have to grow. You have to learn. Yeah, no doubt. Well, thank you, Caroline, so much for being with us today and for sharing some of those, some of those facts and some really incredible uh, thought processes. A lot of folks just kind of look at a makeup thing and just like, oh, that's kind cool and cute, but there's a whole lot more to Caroline than just, than just uh, makeup. And uh, I wanted to be able to share that with y'all today and uh, know how incredible of a woman she is. I absolutely love her and her husband and her kids. And, and uh, I just wanted to share that with you because I think that she's worth listening to. So make sure you stop <laughs> by her LinkedIn, right? And, or her Instagram page and like it. And if you have any questions, obviously more for the ladies with makeup questions or anything like that, as she just said, she's more than willing to talk to you about that. And, uh, and guys, if you want to ask questions, that's cool too. Just keep it questions relative to what she does. And, uh, <laughs> if not, I know her husband is uh, still in the military and, um, he knows where to find you. <laughs> <laughs> just saying all right thank you for having me Matt. it was awesome oh thanks so much caroline i, I appreciate you and uh, we love you guys thanks so much for being here on hope revealed today yes thank you thank you bye well one last thing before we go today i want to share a great scripture with you from the bible and remember that as paul said to us from god's heart in philippians 4 6 to 9 don't worry about anything instead pray about everything tell god what you need and thank him for all that he's done then You'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what's true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned to receive from me, everything you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. And that is surely well, my friends, the choice is yours. We have an opportunity for real beauty in our lives, and we had an opportunity to hear about that today in a special and unique way. Thank you so much for being here today. I don't want you to forget one thing that's so important. Don't give in, don't give up, and never forget, God's got this.